In a previous video for Marvel's Avengers, we covered the top 10 tips for new players. So these are things that you specifically want to do. Now in today's video, for something a bit different, we're actually going to talk about the top 5 things you don't want to do. These are mistakes that I potentially made myself while I was playing through the game or, or lessons I have learned from the time I've put in since launch. So let's jump in and let's check these out. The first thing then that you do not want to do in the game is you do not want to hoard your skill points. There's simply no reason to do that at all. I've seen quite a lot of messages from people that were concerned that you couldn't potentially max out all the skill trees and you would miss out if you maybe put a, a point into a skill that you weren't going to use later on. But the way it works, when you hit the level cap, which is currently level 50, you will max out your primary tree completely and your speciality and mastery tree. You'll max them out with the exception for certain skills where you're choosing one of three. So don't hold on to those points. The one thing I would say though is that early game, try and unlock that ability that allow you to charge both your light and heavy attack. They can be great for breaking shields. But other than that, go crazy and have fun upgrading your abilities. The next thing you do not want to do when you unlock your first major artifact, the impulse will be there to go in and actually upgrade it. That's something I've done myself, but some of the later artifacts you get are much better than the ones you get early game. You have the Dark Hold, which you can see at level 3 here, just to the left of the Tacticon. I'm not going to show that off, I'm going to save that for another video because that's a pretty amazing artifact and it does some pretty special stuff as well. But in regards to these, when you first unlock them, do not go in and upgrade them because one, the currency to get them takes an absolute age to get and two as well, something I'm not sure if it's a bug or not, but when you upgrade an artifact on a specific character, if you then change to a different character, it won't actually be upgraded and then when you have to start back on level one again. So really take your time, wait till you've unlocked a nice selection of artifacts and only upgrade ones that specifically work on certain heroes. Don't go maxing it out for all your heroes because it'll simply take far too long to grind all that currency. The next thing you do not want to do is actually a pretty big mistake I made myself. Now, when you're playing the game, you are conditioned to upgrade your gear because that's how you increase your gear power. It is a cycle that goes round. You get new gear, you upgrade it, you come up against stronger enemies and they drop new gear and you just keep going round and round. Now, at the moment, the power cap in the game for gear is 150. However, there is a soft cap in place, so once you reach 130, enemies won't actually drop any higher than that. Now I didn't actually realise that myself for a fair bit of time and what I was doing is I was upgrading a lot of gear pieces, dropping at 130, hoping that enemies would start dropping higher gear pieces to get me towards 150, but that simply didn't happen at all. So the, the highest you can get with the content available in the game as far as I can see will be 140. You only want to upgrade gear pieces at 130 that are absolutely perfect. Do not upgrade just regular ones hoping that your gear power will go higher because that won't work. They also use something called upgrade modules that are really hard to come by and you can see from this tooltip it's costing you a ton of your currency to upgrade them as well. So just when you get to level 130 only upgrade the gear piece if it's absolutely perfect. On board the Helicarrier, there is a cosmetic vendor called Chastity McBride. Now, they offer a selection of nameplates, emotes, and also costumes updates on a weekly basis. Now, the difference from the marketplace is the marketplace requires you to spend real life money, whereas this requires you to spend something called units. They are earned in game. I've played the game a whole lot more hours than I care to admit. And I've only got 11,000 units and one of your legendary costumes, for example, would cost 7,000 units. So these do come a little bit on the slower side. Now, the thing I would tell you not to do is when you first see this store and you think this is great, I don't have to spend any real money for it. You will feel tempted to actually go in and just start buying lots of different things. Now, I wouldn't do that in the first instance unless it's something you really, really want. The reason being that when you're playing the game, a lot of these drops can actually come via the game as well. But they will be random, so this is a guaranteed way of getting them. So, for example, if you're out and you're, you're battling enemies and you loot a chest, there's a chance that you actually get a, a nameplate. When it comes to your costumes, when you're actually playing the game, you will have recipes for these that drop. Now, you go to the tech lab 
and the fabrication machine on board the helicarrier. You put the recipe in and you'll get a random costume out. So you could, for example, let's just say you spend 5,000 on a costume and then you use one of your patterns and that's that same costume that comes up. Now what happens is you only get roughly 250 of your units back. So again, unless you're completely desperate for something that's shown within this store, just hold off and the majority of them will come in time. On board the helicarrier and at the Ant Hill, there is a, a gear vendor called Roy now. The thing I would say not to do is to buy gear from this particular vendor, unless of course something pops up that's perhaps an exotic or it is a perfect piece of gear. The reason being that gear drops really often in game, but the one thing it doesn't drop often and you use the same currency fragments to buy it as you would for gear would be the speciality items you can actually see at the bottom. So these items are used to upgrade your gear and upgrade your minor artifacts as well. And that's something that as I've been playing later game, I'm not short on gear, but I'm most definitely short on these speciality crafting items. The final thing you do not want to do is you do not want to overlook the faction vendors and how useful they actually are. So their inventory updates daily. Now they have the regular gear at the top, so that's very similar to the, the faction vendor Roy that we looked at a moment ago. The difference is that under the speciality items they have your, your minor artifacts available here. Now some of these at higher levels can be really pretty amazing. So if we look at the one I managed to buy earlier on today, you can see it's not fully upgraded but I'm getting over 100 precision on that because these minor artifacts can roll free of the same stats so if you're trying to build a tanky character you're trying to build a glass cannon these minor artifacts are exceptionally important pretty hard to get in game especially when it comes to rare drops for them so being able to go into a vendor once a day and having a selection of them is definitely great so do not forget to do that and do not forget to actually go to the helicarrier and the anthill because they both have their separate faction vendors as well so these are the top six things you do not want to do in Marvel's Avengers. I know at the start of the video I said it would be the top five, but I was actually working through and recording the video, I come up with an additional tip there that would hopefully be helpful for you. Now, let me know in the comments below if you actually have any tips yourself or any mistakes you potentially made and you're regretting it that you want to warn others about. And on the channel, I will be having a lot more guide videos coming up. So if you enjoyed this particular video, take the time to hit the like button, leave a comment below because comments drive engagement and engagement means more people see the video, which is always good for me as well. But thanks for tuning in for this. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon.